welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, oh this, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And we have a live audience mod. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Washington uh, taste off. A lot of you who watch the show know I'm a big fan of Washington State as a whole. We never generalize. And uh, I'm excited about this. We have a Gramercy Cellar Syrah. Nice little package, right? Walla Walla 2005. What is this, 40 bones? Zoom it, Ma. Zoom it. How many people have had this wine in the past? Raise your hand. 2005. One more time. Okay. How many people have had wine from Gramercy in the past? I good. Good. New stuff for a lot of people. Let's give it a snippy sniff. You can see some nice color. You know, kind of pretty much. Zoom in, Ma. Come on. You think I'm going to just let you sit there? I'm jet lagged. You're jet lagged? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your excuse when they come running? I'm ignoring you. <laughs> Some nice vibrant fruit on the nose. I get a really obvious black cherry component, which is fine and dandy. A little really dark plum kind of thing going on on the nose as well. I get a little rosemary kind of on the nose, which is kind of interesting. Interesting. Um, a little creaminess. Let's give it a whirl. Interesting wine. I really like the outer layers of this wine. I, it's, it's really interesting. What year is this? 05, right? This is a wine that I really am curious about what it's going to do in 36 months. I think like the outer layers of the wine are really interesting. I like the uh, I like the balance. It started. It looked like it wanted to get a little hairy. You know. It's, you know what? It's like a girl going out to the club, right? A little too risque and she changed her outfit because she didn't want to slut it up. That's what this wine did to me, right? It looked like it wanted to get crazy and then it kind of brought itself back, which I like. And, and I feel like it can do that more in celery. The fruit is very solid, very clean. The source of this fruit is, is something I'm interested in because I like it. There's a little nice black pepper kind of component going on. But the outer layers, the beginning and the end, I like the balance. I like the balance of the tannins of this wine. The middle bothers me a little bit. I, I don't want to call it a hollow mentel because it's not. I just don't think it's developed. So that's my real ultimate concern about the wine at this point. Also, how long were these wines open for? Does anybody know? Somebody want to guess? About an hour. About an hour. Um, I'd like to see it, it opened up a little bit longer possibly as well to see if it flushes out. There's a little bit of a... I don't want to call it a venison thing. You know, I love that whole like hit a deer on the side of the road and rip it, your knife out and cut that deer up and put some cherries some and some. Cherries some that's very, very nice. And some black pepper. I get a little bit of that. Gets a little gamey, a little meaty. Do you guys get that in the mid palate? I, I get a little bit of that. Um, there's a raspberry jam component. This is a pretty interesting little wine. I think it's a wine that is. Just go one more time. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's growing on me. And, and I, I need to pour a little more. Um, solid. Uh, I'm going to range this wine because I want to see it develop. I would prop for myself, I would go 89 to 91 plus on this. I'm real curious to see this wine develop. 40 bones is a price point, right? I mean, this is not your everyday wine, so you know, you're know you splurging a little bit on this. Um, again, I, I think it's worth the world, though. I think, you know, I'm kind of like, I wouldn't say it's Rhone-esque, but there's some things going on there while still showing the vibrance of the fruit from uh, Walla Walla. Very interesting wine, something that I'd like to see evolve a little bit more over time. <clears throat> Nicholas Cole, Camille 2004. Yep. And this rolls in at 48 US dollars. And uh, this is a wine I have a lot of experience with, in a lot of ways. Number one, it's a wine that I once bought a tremendous closeout on. 
and made a boatload of money on it. So I've always heard <laughs> just That was a lot of fun. Uh, number two, it's a wine that I've respected for a long time. I don't think I've had 2004 uh, yet, so I'm excited about that. And uh, I think, uh, I think um, you know, it's been a wine that I've really enjoyed, especially the 01. I was a big, big fan of the 01. It's one of the few wines I drank more than three bottles of in a year or so. Uh, in the past, uh, I've been a big fan of mine. You got it? You zoomed in? Yep. I didn't break it down for you. 64% Merlot, 23% Cab Franc, and 13% Cabernet. Very classic Bordeaux-like. A little right bank action blend. Uh, let's give it a snippy sniff. Now see, aromatically, this is up my alley, right? Like I'm starting to get into this, right? Um, I really, really like the uh, sour cherry kind of component. It's getting a little earthy. There's a little green action, almost a hint of mint on the nose as well, which I'm a big fan of. How many people are picking up the subtle mint on the nose? Very nice. Little rhubarb and a little red radish on the nose as well. This is a very interesting blend of fruit and vegetables. I'm always gonna be a fan of that kind of component. Um, really, really interesting. I like it, this nose is very good. Let's give it a whirl. This reminds me of Arturo Gotti. How many people know who Arturo Gotti is? Raise your hand. Well, very good. None of you guys watch boxing? He's so exciting. Anyway, Arturo Gotti, little guy, packs a big punch, right? Just, this has a very focused, this is almost like a paintball uh, bullet, right? It's like, it's like all up in that little spot, it's like psh, when it hits you in the face and it hurts and you're like crying, but you don't want to act girly in front of your guys, or grab it and hurt, put some dirt on it. That's what this wine reminds me of. It's got a, such an intense little explosion of black fruit on the middle of your palate. I really, really am enjoying it. Um, very, I don't want to say Bordeaux-like, but Bordeaux-like, uh, which I like. I like the uh, green pepper aspect of it in the mid-palate transition to the fruit on the finish. Um, I get really obvious strawberry components on the tail end. And see, this has a soft spot in my heart because, not because of all the cash we made on it, because this reminds me of the wine that I kind of, like, those early Bordeaux's that I really kind of like. This is kind of the wine that was cool and popular when I first got into wine. And the wine that I was like making fun of in the late 90s and trying to get people to drink Barossa Valley Shiraz and drink the Spanish wines that were coming on the scene and the wine that I'm now gravitating towards back because the pendulum swung too far, swung too far to the fruit bombs. How many people in this room like this wine? Raise your hand. How many people hate this wine? Nice, awesome. How many people love meh? They could care less about this wine. Okay, very solid. Pretty popular wine in the room. Two people were very brave and hated it. Nice work. Uh, a couple people were mad about it. There, there's some good wine going on in here. Really, there are. There's really some really interesting aspects to this wine. I like this wine. Um, it really fits my palate, especially where my palate is today. And let's talk about that for a half a second while I'm here. Your palate will evolve. It will always evolve. And, and that's what you want. And too many people are emailing me saying, Gary, I like the Shiraz right now, but I hope to be like you one day and like the vegetables. No. Don't like vegetables if you don't. I legitimately grew up liking vegetables more than fruit. Like my mom's like, you want a pear? You got celery, mom? That's who I was, right? But not everybody's like that. Um, I'm, I'm feeling this wine. I'm going to 91 plus on this wine. I'm a big fan of this wine. I think it's very good. I wish it was less than 48 bones. You know, if this was a $30 wine, I'd lose my mind. I'd really be all up in here and screaming and making you run out right now and telling you to go buy this wine. But, you know, even at 48 bones, which again is suggested retail, so could be under 40 in shops around the country. Um, I, I, uh, I'm feeling good wine. And finally, Rob Newsom makes a wine. Boudreaux, 2004, Reserve Cabernet. Go oh, damn it! Damn it! So, so, so this wine rolls in at the low, low, low price of 100 bones. Not bashful. Zoom it in, Mott. So we had an interesting experience, a little backstory in this wine. It got sent to us. I was running late. I was like, let me do a show. And I'm like, oh, here's a box. Opened it and put it on the table and tasted the wines. And fell in love with the regular Cabernet. So much so that I uh, felt that the production was so small and I asked the Vayner Nation to join the mailing list and seek out the wine and 
I think uh, Mr. Newsom felt the effects of the Vayner Nation. And I've uh, got some phone calls. And we are not going to score this wine any better. There we go, Dallas. <laughs> we are not going to rate this wine any better because Mr. Newsom was quoted in the Washington Post saying, besides Robert Parker, Gary Vaynerchuk is the most influential wine critic in the world. <laughs> not that <happening. laughs> Now, had he said, besides Gary Vaynerchuk, Robert Parker is the most influential critic in the world, maybe you would have a better shot. But I've been very, very, very uh, impressed with these wines. Uh, in the past, I've had some of the other wines off camera, and uh, I, uh, I'm pretty excited that I've still not had this, so this will be my first take on this vino. 100 bones, ballsy. Let's give it a sniff. <laughs> Interesting, right? The nose is very menacing. Like you know, like like. So I'm gonna get very personal with you guys right now. I'm not very familiar with the stuff you put on cuts or burns, because in my family, being very Eastern European, when you cut or burn yourself, grandma rolls up on you and says, "Pee on your hand." <laughs> so I had a very interesting childhood of constantly pissing on my cup. <laughs> Very weird. She also put mayonnaise on her face, that's why I can't eat mayonnaise. But, I love you, Grandma. But, so I don't know, but this smells like the ointment you would put on if you cut yourself, I feel like, or burn yourself. It's got a very interesting kind of thing going on. Little hints of eucalyptus as well coming through for me. Very obvious black raspberry flavors going on. Oh my god, I sat on my foot and now it's killing me. Sorry. Um, what is Kelly? <laughs> this is a bad mom. Um, to first? Uh, very intense nose, very interesting. Definitely a turn off for a lot of people. How many people here, he's in the front row, he will not turn around, promise me. <laughs> How many people here are a little turned off by this nose? Raise your hand. Solid amount. You too, right? <laughs> me too. Um, how many people love it? The nose. Interesting. How many people think that the nose is indicative of some sort of weird thing going on? Interesting. After we do the Q&A, everybody can just raise your hands. So you're going to have to break down this weird thing you think it is. Um, I like it. You know, it's, you know, for me, I'm always looking for character, something a little bit different. Um, but this is the kind of wine that I'd be very hesitant to recommend to a lot of people because you know, I don't know if people are ready for it or would like it. So it's not as much a crowd pleaser on the nose, um, but obviously, with only an hour, a couple hours, this wine could definitely blow off, the nose could change, and obviously with cellaring over time, I would expect the nose to change. Let's give it a whirl. So, So the wine is very tannic. Uh, it's got a lot going on. It's very bold. It's got an intense flavor. The fruit, again, is very pure. The fruit, Rob, do you buy the grapes? Yeah. You better have a contract locked up because the fruit is very pure, very good. Um, the wine is awkward, in a very awkward stage. It really is racy. It's up and down. It's like a 15-year-old you know, trying to find its identity at some level, right? One day, emo punk. Next day, skateboarder. Next day, Britney Spears. You know, kind of just trying to find its thing. Um, that is definitely the first characteristic I feel in this wine. Um, it's got good polish. The, the alcohol is kind of bothering me a little bit at this point. I hope the fruit rounds out to it. 13.3. I think he's lying a little bit. I think it's a little higher. Doesn't want to be taxed. <laughs> um, that is a concern. But um, you know, at 100 bones, this is a very difficult wine to make a big investment for right now. I think it does have underlining potential, um, um, but it is a little. You know, it's a little bit tricky. Um, I really, really need to probably pop. Is there any more of this anywhere? Can you get me a little more of this? Ma, there you go, Matt. See, you got my back. Give it to me. Um, this is Matt, my assistant. Everybody give him a big shout out. Yes. There's no way I'm here without him. I have no idea what my schedule is. Matt, help me. This is a 
interesting. Now see, this is what's fun, right? Now I smell it again, right? And I'm almost like thinking about like pina colada, almost like coconut kind of thing going on on the nose, right? You feel it, right? Now see, that is a different thing, right? Because I'm all about the coconuts. So this is a very complex wine, obviously, and very youthful and will evolve. It's like, you know, when we go, I just got back from Bordeaux and tasted all the first groves out of barrel hosts. I mean, you know. You know, anybody who's telling you they know, they don't know crap. What, you, what we do know is we look for signs. This has signs of being a very serious wine. I also feel it's got a tremendous potential of completely falling apart and not being interesting. <laughs> That's gambling, my friends. That's gambling. So I, I'm really excited to see where this wine goes over the next three to five years. Even more? Yes, even more. Because, see, I like it. I mean, I hate the price point. I can promise you that. Um, God, this is crazy. Um, I'm going to score this wine today. I used to always make fun of Stephen Tanzer for doing this. I'm such a sucker hypocrite. I'm going to go 90 question mark because I'm a little confused of where this is going. Um, I like it, but I'll tell you right now, I like the regular cuvee a lot more. Or my palate at the time. Obviously, Rob's going to say, he's going to come up and he's going to say, Three to five years from now, wait do you see what this thing's gonna do. How many years have you done the reserve, Rob? Twice. Twice, so he has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he has no clue where that's gonna go. He's not sure, he's hoping, and there are very serious components that could put this wine together and make it special. But it's a risky play, my friends. It's a risky play. Um, I like it though, and, uh, and I, I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm gonna hang on to this bottle, and hang out with it for the next six or seven hours and see where it evolves too. That's the show. I'm, I'm super excited. I love doing the live crowd. It's, you know, it's kind of tough though, right? Because like I'm tasting it, I'm smelling it, and some of you were like, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna hurt that person's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all in all, a pretty good showing. Um, you know, I'm very, very surprised at the Nicholas Cole. I don't know why, I shouldn't be, but I really liked it. I, I really think that it's the wine that shined. Eh, but maybe the Cougar Crest, dollar for dollar, right? I mean, really dominated. You know, I probably would maybe even give the, the, these two guys are really good wines. I think there's some real upside, obviously, to the third wine. The uh, other two whites just did not do it for me, but not a bad showing under the conditions. Uh, question of the day. Who do you love more than anybody else in the world? Because I'm all, you're very quick. Very quick on that <laughs> wife. It's good work. Say it with me. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world whether they like it or not. Thank you.